Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and we're taking a look, like I said last week, at another gift from a pair of twins, the Smith Sisters. This is the second gift they sent me. It is Studio 86 version of Rekgar. Now, of course, this is a significant improvement over his Generation 1 toy appearance, and you'll see that momentarily. This is one of the more anticipated figures, especially since coming up in the line, we are going to get ourselves a generic Junkion figure. And many of us are looking forward to getting our hands on one of them. I myself am definitely looking forward to that because I am going to show whether or not you can get Rekgar to mount him and ride him in the motorcycle form. Because if Hasbro messes that up, they've kind of ruined the whole purpose of giving us these studio figures. We want to be able to display them and show them off like they were done in their feature film counterparts. So... Rekgar better be able to ride the Junkion figure in some convincing manner. And of course, Rekgar here comes with a backdrop like all the other studio figures. This is an interesting looking picture of the planet of Junk. Even though for some weird reason it does have a junkie on ship flying in the background. The only time we saw one of those flying was when everybody left the planet. So, seems kind of weird that it would be included in the artwork, but I guess it does kind of break the sky up a little bit. Anyway, whatever. Let's put Rekgar back in here. And of course, as is tradition here on this channel, we will compare him next to the 1986 toy. And as you can see, the 1986 toy looks nothing like how Rekgar appeared in the animated film. Rekgar, of course, was a popular character featured in the film, most mainly due to him being voiced by Monty Python veteran Eric Idle. Gave Rekgar a rather comical voice, but also a rather chatty one that spouted off all sorts of nonsense tied to commercials and other jingles that were rather commonplace on television back in the time when the movie was released. And, of course, for some weird reason, the 1986 figure had to give him a gun, despite the fact Rekgar was never seen in the film with a gun. <clears throat> Rekgar only used an axe in his one-on-one -on -one spar against Springer. And, of course, they didn't include a way to mount the wheel, the extra wheel, onto the side of Rekgar. So, many of us were able to just attach it to his axe. And it gave the weapon kind of a junky-looking appearance. So, it kind of worked. However, the new one is a significant improvement upon the original. So we'll put the original back in the junk pile for the moment. And let's take a look at Rekgar's accessories, starting with his axe. The axe is done up so it's on a rather thin stalk of plastic. And the head of it does rotate like a pinwheel. So you can have it in different positions. Whatever works out for everybody. And of course it does have a post on it. Meaning that in such a way it can also, if you don't wish to have Rekgar holding it, you can 
relatively easily mount it onto Rekgar's backside, thus allowing him to store the weapon out of the way. And then, of course, Rekgar also has two of these motorcycle wheels. Of course, the central piece is set up in such a way so that it can remain stationary and the wheel rotate around it. So that means the wheels will turn. And just to prove my point, the other one is removable as well. Unlike on the original toy, where the back wheel was simply folded into place. Now, of course, we'll take a look at Rekgar's articulation here. And he has what would pretty much be standard for many of the studio figures. His head can be turned from side to side, and it will look up and down. His arms can be raised up about so far, and his arms do rotate at the shoulder all the way. But you will have to move them slightly so that they do clear the handlebars that are on his back. His arm can be bent at the elbow 90 degrees, and there is a swivel at the bicep. So they do, he does have G.I. Joe style battle grip. Rekgar can do the twist at his hips. You can raise his legs up and out into almost a full splits. You can raise his leg up at the hip 90 degrees and his knees are double jointed. But in the normal sense, they will bend at the knee normally 90 degrees, but they will also bend upwards almost 90 degrees. And, of course, you can adjust his ankle. So, he has some good posability going for him. Okay, let's get ready to transform Rekgar. It is somewhat on the complicated side, but not too bad. The first thing we do is we've got to raise his arms up into a nice surrender pose. And once they're like that, you're going to turn the arms at the bicep so that the spikes here are protruding towards the back. And then we will come up here and we're going to fold down his hands inside his arms. The next we're going to take his head and chest section and we are going to unfold it all the way out like so. Now while that's out we're going to reach in here and we're going to remove folding out the front of the motorcycle which will also include getting the windscreen up a bit. Now, of course, once all that is out, we're going to fold over this section out of his hips so that it folds the motorcycle out in front. So it's kind of like you got a motorcycle front on legs. <coughs> Thankfully, he's got those little cannons in his chest that'll help hold him up. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we've got to fold everything, we've got to fold in the chest piece so that his head goes inside, inside here, and keep it so that the red portion stays outwards. It's a simple matter of fold that in, but we gotta get all this plastic flaps to collapse inwards, as far inward as it will go. Just exactly like that. Now of course once that's in, you're going to fold the arms in 
at the shoulder. Like so. Then, before we get things too settled, get one of the wheels, doesn't really matter which one, and you're going to plug it into the big holes here on both arms. Get that plugged in. And then now, right here on his arms, right along the red portion, there's a little hole in them. And that little hole should line up with the posts on Retgar's chest piece. So, line them up and insert them, and that will hold the front end of the motorcycle in place. Just exactly like that. Now, of course, while you got that situated, you'll fold up the handlebars, like so. Then we're going to adjust his leg, adjust Rekgar's legs, to put him in a seating position. Once you've got him in something of a seated position... We'll open them up a bit, and on the inside of his knees, we will attach the other wheel. Go ahead and get that secured in. And then we are going to fold down Rekgar's feet. And you'll notice here on his toes... <clears throat> he does have a small hole in them, and those should line up with the posts here on his arms. It's not going to be a perfect alignment because they're at an angle, but just work them in. And then, after that, for helpful display purposes... He's got some panels here that will fold out on the legs. These basically form a kickstand of sorts that will help hold the motorcycle up. And there you have it. Rekgar is in his motorcycle form. And of course, if you would like, you've got a post right here. Which definitely is a long Rekgar's butt. Might as well say it. Kids are out there probably laughing. So you can attach the axe back here. Remember folks, this is a family friendly channel. So as much as you want to joke about where the axe is going, please refrain from putting that in the comments. And there we have it. Rekgar in motorcycle mode. And of course we put these down a bit. How well does he roll on the wheels? Eh, he doesn't really roll all that good. Eh, he's more meant to be a display piece rather than a toy, so... For a display piece, he does work out pretty good. And, of course, for comparison's sake, here is the Generation 1 motorcycle. And, as you can see, they're both pretty similar to how they turned out. But I think we'll all agree the more modern interpretation does look a little better. Not perfect by any stretch, but... It does more closely match how Rekgar appeared in the film. So we get down to my thoughts. Yeah, I enjoyed getting this version of Rekgar. I was always disappointed with the Generation 1 toy in how it did not resemble the character at all. 
it's another clear case of the fact that the toy was originally designed differently using some of the older sketch layouts for the movie. And then Rekgar got a radically redesigned look so that he appears differently in the final product. The new version, it is interesting. It is certainly, it does certainly capture all the essence of Rekgar. Now, once we get some Junkions to get released here in 2022, it'll definitely help with his look. And probably with putting him alongside some Siege and Earthrise and Kingdom figures. Especially for the guys that have yet to get a Studio 86 version. We could probably come up with a nice little scene that gets ready to set up the big party. We'll have to try that sometime. Maybe when the Junkion comes out. At any rate, that's my look at Studio 86 version of Rekgar. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And please remember, if you do love the content that we feature here on this channel, please be sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe, because we do appreciate the feedback around here. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later. There's Rekgar will put it, bye-bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.